Hi, this is J.R. Reidinger again from uh, Greenwich, Connecticut at our home on meeton.com for the second sec uh, section of the enhancements or improvements, or you might want to call it the tune-up and overhaul of the MPCP to make it really work as well as it can. Uh, and we're going to talk about downline volume placement uh, and how it affects the plan and where it helps the business and where it hurts the business. Now, in order to understand this, we have to kind of go under the hood and understand how the MPCP works and how it's able to do some of these miraculous things that nobody else can do. Uh, it's kind of like defying gravity, but there's certain mathematical and dynamic principles that control how the plan works and what makes it work better and what stresses it or makes it not work as well and can even break it. Now, residual income is only as good as your longevity. I always joke that there's a lot of companies that also have a two to three year plan. And <laughs> what it comes down to is they start over every two to three years because they don't have the foundation or the principles to make it last. And making it last or longevity is necessary to have residual income. What good's residual income if you got to do it over again? The whole point of it is to build it once and it lasts forever. So let's dive right in. I'm going to follow the slides very closely, and this will enable you later to go through and show your people or review it and understand it better your, yourself. Most of what I'm going to say is actually in the, the text or the the print on the slide, and I'll uh, digress and comment on some things when, when necessary. So let's dive in and have some fun, and uh, I hope that the light bulb goes off and you really begin to understand some of the things that make this work better. I'm really going to go back to the beginning of the business, how we built it. Uh, we built it the right way. It's solid. Those that did it with us have had residual income for 10 to 20 years. Uh, and there is a right way and a wrong way, and you need to know the difference. So starting with downline volume placement, it was really never intended in the MPCP, and it reduces, it actually reduces production and the compounding accrual of volume from the bottom up. When you really understand that, I think you're going to be, well, you're going to think twice about where and when you do it, because it really doesn't get you to home plate. So it might uh, allow some commissions to be kicked or earned temporarily, but it's really not the solution. So in the plan, if you take a look at this slide, volume is supposed to be generated from the bottom up uh, and repeat monthly from retail accounts. And you know how retail we're driven we are. Now that's really important because the foundation of a skyscraper has to be able to support the structure. You can build as big as you want, but you need to have a solid foundation of regenerated volume. And each UFO is like a building block, if you will, or a girder in that structure, and they have to be solid. So when we take a look at this, MPCP and organization is being loaded now quite often from the top down rather than from production from the bottom up accruing and compounding. Of course, everybody gets 100% credit for that uh, in there for a year without dilution, so everybody benefits. But the sales and production from the top is sometimes synthetically placed, synthetically. It wasn't produced there. You looked at the powerful back office, and that's one of the things that really, I think, has changed things and caused this migration to... Uh, a, a way of building the business is not as solid uh, because people can see on Friday where exactly where everything is and they look to get volume and place it strategically in order to optimize the plan or to uh, maximize the earnings, which is okay, but next week it's not there. Uh, or next week you look at it and, oh, there's some action over here, so I'm going to place volume over there. And that really undermines the math of the plan. It wasn't designed to do that. It was designed to be built solid from the bottom up. But regardless, the sales and production from the top 
is being placed at the bottom and it's not real regenerated volume. It's something that somebody above did and they're placing it strategically in order to optimize the plan. So that's not for long-term solid growth and uh, repeat volume and regenerated commissions and volume, which is residual income. And that's what the plan's all about. This weakens the business and reduces the productivity because you're giving something to somebody uh, that really didn't do it in order to advance them in the plan. You know, so volume is supposed to be generated from the bottom up and repeat monthly, uh, you know, and uh, they make the retail profit and start to climb the ladder. Okay, so uh, we have this effect with the yellow arrow where volume is supposed to be coming from the bottom up but what's actually happening more and more has become prevalent is the problem is people are putting volume down at the bottom. Now, the law in our type of business says that it has to be retail driven and unencumbered volume is volume that's bought. Now, it may be sold, but you can't determine if it's sold when it's placed. When it's placed, it's not sold yet. So this creates a tremendous unknown that needs to be tracked. And the only way to correct it when somebody doesn't sell the product, because you can only place sold product. But the catch 22 is when you order it, it's not sold. You may have repeat customers and have a record of, of uh, selling 70% of that over and over and over again, and it's all legit and solid. But when a lot of this activity is going on and it's not already sold, uh, we have tremendous amounts of volume being placed all over the place. Uh, and the only way to rectify it, if it doesn't get sold, uh, because the temptation uh, is so great when someone sees opportunities to move volume or place volume and then have people hit checks or hit them themselves, that uh, they're going to do it. And the only way to correct it is to reverse the commissions or have chargebacks or to uh, reverse the volume. Now, you can imagine what that causes. You thought you had volume and the next week it's deducted and the next week it's deducted. We don't want to go there. I'm talking reality and I'm talking something that is very positive, really. Because this is how we built the business from the beginning. Solid from the bottom up. The primary or prevalent thing wasn't where can I place extra BV that I, I'm generating. Even if it is retailed, it has to be limited. It has to make sense. Uh, it has to be where you're working. It can't be all over the place and changed every week. So that's really what's going on here. 25% of the crude volume comes from upline placing BV rather than new volume being generated from the bottom up as the business grows from new UFOs being added. Even when a new UFO qualifies, that 200 has to be sold. The requirement uh, makes sure that it is or they lose their, their activity. So uh, we basically had a formula where everything was self-reconciling and all of the commissions earned could be tracked to retailed volume and we could prove that uh, it was totally a retail driven program. But with this placement of BV becoming a bigger and bigger thing, almost the main thing to many people, it contradicts the principles of building and what makes MPCP strong. But I don't know why it's necessary. I don't know why people are so enamored by it. Uh, but it's not the way we build it, and it's not a principle that works well in the MPCP. And the bottom line is, it's not good for a strong business. You want to have a strong business, it can't come from all downline placement of BV, like a bingo game, uh, you know, or tit-tat-toe. Let me put it here and complete the, the word. Uh, you know, well, what happens next week? So I think that makes sense. There, there's supposed to be new volume and regenerated repeat volume at every UFO BDC in the line, not synthesized volume from somebody else's work and sales. I mean, it, it's still legitimate if they can prove that it was sold and then it's placed, but 
uh, placing it in many different places starts to stress the mathematics of the plan. So we need to understand the magic of the binomial plan and MPCP. I call this uh, the MPCP magic list. Things that we have been able to do that totally revolutionized the industry that were never possible before. So when someone first sees the MPCP, it's all, it often looks too good to be true. I mean, have you ever heard that? I mean, true or false? It, it, it's mind boggling. Uh, if you've never seen this type of thing, by the way, I invented the binary system, the binomial system 26, 27 years ago. Uh, and I know how it works and how the math works. It's an actuarial plan. It's not a finite math plan where it's very simple. At the end of the month, all the volume resets to zero. There's no accumulation. And, you know, the people that didn't hit brackets lose their volume, and the people at the top made all the money. So what makes this possible? How are we defying gravity, you know, as a, as a metaphor? Uh, well, when someone uh, from the direct sales industry sees this, it baffles them, and they question, how can it be done? How can everybody get credit? How can it be, make more money on just two legs than 10 or 20? It mesmerizes them. You know, with 100% credit of all the orders that everybody gets credit for without dilution. And dilution means, you know, one level gets 5%, next 4, next 3, next 2, next 1, until you run out uh, of money. And then infinite search and accrual for a year, and then the vertical multiplication of income, you know, through the 002 and 003, and then re-entries, and not being spread thin. Uh, or in competition with your, your group, uh, you know, just to mention a few are mind-boggling to people. Uh, but there really is a method of madness, and a, a giant plane can't fly with tons of weight uh, unless certain principles of physics are met. And it's that vacuum and thrust on, uh, that allow it to, to lift off. Same thing with the plant. So if you break that vacuum or you don't have the thrust, it's not going to fly. Uh, and if you don't understand that and you're trying to do things, you may be tampering with what could crash the plane. So I hope that makes sense to you. So first of all, let me ask you a question. Look at the bottom of the screen. Why is it called the MPCP? the Management Performance Compensation Plan. Well, it's because you're not just being paid on volume. You don't have an entitlement to income just because the volume is there. There is a required management performance that where you have to make sure that certain things happen in the organization and in the downline as it grows, just like any uh, business organization. Uh, the, you know, from the president, the vice presidents, to the divisional heads, to the directors, they have responsibilities to carry out certain tasks uh, in order to get paid. It's the same thing here. So when that doesn't happen, everything goes haywire uh, several levels down. And, you know, we got to stick to this. We're going to have to be, you know, more diligent about it. So let's uh, understand a general concept or a general principle. Let's just use common sense. Every machine, computer program, system ever created operates based on rules or laws of physics, math, and logic, which can't be ignored in order for it to work. So the MPCP and the Market America Unfranchise is no different. The very things in the design, the dynamics, the math, and principles that make the MPCP work and make these things possible, you know, to, to do what nobody else has been able to do, never existed in other programs, are the same factors that allow for how the MPCP works differently. So if you violate or ignore those laws uh, and those principles, it no longer works. It's that simple. Uh, now, I realize that you may not understand all of that, but the laws of the MPCP are similar to the laws of physics. You know, for example, the force of gravity uh, with a vacuum under the wings allows for flight. Remove either the thrust or the vacuum, and it doesn't happen. It crashes. So, that, you know, for me, that's a good analogy. So below is a perfectly symmetrical filled out binary matrix. 
If everyone did the business perfectly at exactly the same time and time stood still, it would reach critical mass and the payout based on 63% of the BV IBV would be exceeded and commissions would exceed revenue in the next two levels and the plan would implode. Now, what we do in the MPCB is basically defy gravity or that exponential curve uh, because there's timing involved and there's an actuarial base to what normal people would do. The whole plan was based on averages of what an average person statistically did or could do, and we built the plan to match that. But when people manipulate it and do it for other people, they're actually changing uh, in an unnatural way the reality of what people do. Uh, so that, that really uh, can't be allowed. I mean, it, it, it's a problem. And that's why we have rules like uh, same household rule and uh, you know, not doing requirements for other people. Because obviously in a plan where everybody gets credit for the volume and it stays in for months, Okay, if you get multiple people who are not doing it naturally and not doing their part, earning two, it's loading up the payout. It's just common sense. Okay, so the magic of the binomial plan and MPCP. Now, I know you know a lot of this, but I really feel the need just to kind of, it's like the Ten Commandments or something. I feel the need to go through them because this is what makes our program so great and things that, that you love. Uh, so, uh, the magic of the MPCP, this is a list of things that makes possible, uh, that most UFOs love and count on and believe in and appreciate. Uh, this is the juice. The funny thing is, they've been there for a long time. When we first came out with the plan, it was revolutionary and people were just like amazed. But today we take them to granted because they have always been there and they're automatic. Uh, so I think we have to reappreciate them. It's all about residual income. That's the bottom line. These principles and design of the plan were designed to make it more realistic for the average person to develop a great residual income. Whether that be a thousand a month or twenty thousand a month or fifty thousand a month, it's all about residual income. But it's made possible through retailing and shopping. Uh, and that's what completes the cycle, and that's the bottom line. So let's take a look at some of these things. I, I feel compelled just to, to, to read them. Uh, you know, you build <coughs> only two legs to earn fifteen hundred to thirty-six hundred per month, or one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars per year, versus comparatively in any other program six to twenty legs. Some of you complain about two legs and not being able to continue sponsor. Sponsoring. What would you do in any other program where you need six to 20 legs, you know, in a network marketing or other horizontal traditional compensation programs to reach the same income level of 2100 or 3600 or even 1500 a week or a month? Okay, so the plan is based, number two, the plan is based on paying the most possible money. We figured out the most possible money that could be paid and still have a company operating in sound, not in the red, with the lowest multiplier of two. Uh, you have to have a multiplier in any marketing plan in order to have profitability for the participants. So. That's meaning one only has to have two organizations to make a potential maximum of 3,600 per week uh, per BDC or $187,000 a year. Nothing can hold a candle to it. Three, the infinite search for volume to infinity uh, for volume daily and weekly to find and accumulate volume towards each BDC earning. For instance, yours. Now, this is an interesting concept because it's not about redistributing product and levels. It's a program that's a tracking system that searches and looks to bring volume up until it's enough for each person to get paid, and it overlaps. So it's a totally different dynamic and mathematical plan. So reaching pay thresholds to get paid is what it's all about, 
And when it searches to infinity and brings the volume up, and nobody can go outside of the two legs, all volume has to go down, it creates a compounding effect. So there's no finite number of levels or tiers that are paid uh, percentages on or a specific number of levels, and then it goes off the pay line. That's the problem with these other plans. If significant volume is generated by someone below the pay line, you do not get paid, and that, is, that frequently happens. Here, it doesn't matter when or how deep or how long it takes for a star to appear, for somebody to say, get out of my way, I'm going to tear it up. It might be 100 levels down. It might be in another country. That volume still comes up and uh, counts for you getting a residual income. And with two, you're going to get six figures. So, number four. 100% credit without dilution for all of the volume generated and orders placed for everyone in the genealogical line or thread until they get paid up to one year. Now, dilution means that each level gets successively smaller amount and, uh, or the difference between the total payout uh, at the top minus the tiers above uh, what they get paid is what's left over that you would get. We don't have that. We, you know, broken the sound barrier on that. Uh, so, a lot of amazing things in this plan. You know, the fifth is accumulation of volume from week to week and then from month to month. Now, this is easy to take for granted, but that's done until the UFO gets paid on a BDC uh, or for a year, whichever comes first. So, if one doesn't reach a pay threshold bracket, the volume simply accrues the next week for four weeks. And now remember, every other plan in the world cuts off at the end of a month and resets. But if the individual exercises the monthly accrual option of transfer buying or minimum sales requirement, then they accrue from month to month for one year before resetting to zero. All other programs reset the volume monthly. So if someone has not reached the volume bracket to get paid, in that plan, the volume is lost. And someone upstairs or upline makes all the money uh, on the volume and it resets to zero and you or the individual that was new loses out. It's kind of discouraging. But that's the, that's the basic fundamental model of the direct sales industry. Uh, we're defying gravity. So this happens in the MPCP for every UFO until each UFO up each leg or line for every UFO that qualifies and meets the activity requirements on BV and IBV so that a new UFO can climb at their own pace, allowing them to get paid all the possible commissions that are in there because the volume doesn't reset until they hit five and five uh, for, or for one year. And this is unheard of comparatively. Therefore, it's practic it practically becomes uh, not a question of if someone will get paid, but when they will get paid, unless they just stop or simply are not motivated to build or balance a, a second leg. Uh, so it doesn't get any better is the point. So again, infinite search down uh, an organization or UFO daily, you get to see it daily and weekly to find and accumulate sales volume to pay weekly commissions uh, based on the accumulation threshold payout levels, the brackets. And it searches to infinity uh, all sources of Market America BV uh, product and IB product, IBV products from shop.com purchased by UFOs in the genealogical organization line and on their customers. Remember, it tracks the customers too and credits them to the UFO and even customers that lead to customers. So the key feature is searching to infinity to find enough accumulated volume to pay each UFO. Uh, not brackets, not breakaways, it's a totally different concept. The volume never goes off the pay line and in traditional direct sales or network marketing and most commission-based marketing programs uh, or compensation plans pay on a set number of multiple levels. That's why they call it multi-level. And it's usually three to five levels. 
So if significant volume and growth occurs and the real star appears below the pay line, you get no credit for the volume. This is a frequently occurring phenomenon. We have broken the sound barrier. So the vertical seven is the vertical system of profitability and stability. Now I'm bringing these up because they're easy to take for granted, but they're really revolutionary. The concept of profitability and stability and security so that it's based on the smallest possible multiplier of two legs uh, in a genealogical organizational uh, structure, two lines, so that profitability is not dependent on width or adding more people uh, or legs horizontally. In other programs, to be profitable, you have to have more units or more people or more legs or more stores producing horizontally. So there's a differential between your gross volume and their individual volume. Profitability is not dependent here on width or adding more people and legs uh, horizontally. In the MPCP, the UFO is able to accomplish both profitability and security. At the same time when building rather than separately, we're building width for profitability and then depth so that they make money and stay in for security are antagonistic and compete for your time. I mean, you can't be adding and adding on and then building depth at the same time. You just run out of time. It's like the demonstration that I so often do with the pumps. The purpose of that is to show you how hard it is to get all those legs going rather than just the binary uh, pump. So uh, your time uh, is working against your, yourself because it takes time to build width and it takes time to build depth. Here, they're done simultaneously. So in a horizontal system such as MLM, network marketing, real estate, insurance, franchising, you have to build width for profitability, but then depth for security uh, or securing the leg separately. If the people aren't making money, they're not going to stay in and you got to replace them. So uh, number eight, leveraging residual income two to one. This is amazing. Genius. By building the 001 BDC solidly, uh, where it'll earn $109,000 to $187,000 a year based on just two legs, the left and the right, it requires only one leg rather than two to earn double the income or another potential $187,000 a year on the 002 and the 003 uh, BDCs to double or triple income by building just one leg, one more leg. Where else does that exist? Okay, I, this is old hat. You're saying, I know all this. Why are you going over this? Because you don't appreciate it. it it's phenomenal. And, you know, uh, sometimes we have to go back to square one and appreciate how great our program is. I mean, this is because the volume from building a solid 001 is stored in the banks of the 002 and 003 on each leg. So, you know, the, the point is, if you can't do this, you can't do anything. It's the most realistic, lucrative uh, program ever created. And it's based statistically on what average people have been proven to do. So we're not asking you to do something that the company wants you to do or hopes you'll do. It's based on what we know the average person already can do, greatly increasing the probability of individual success. What this results in is that only one leg has to be built per, you know, each of the 002 and 003. In fact, careful planning with a re-entry, uh, placing it in timing, can position, someone can position themselves to build one new leg a year to earn an additional potential $187,000 per year. Now, that makes possible a $2 million per year residual income in 10 years. Absolutely possible. I do it. So why can't you do it? Others are well along the way, uh, over a million. So, you know, that's the power of the plan. Nine, downline placement of newly or additional sponsored UFOs. Now think about it. The model anywhere else is you have to add on horizontally and keep sponsoring uh, in order to be profitable. Here, 
you can you can achieve much greater profitability just on two. But that doesn't mean you stop with two. This is the strongest form of downline placement and produces regenerated volume from the bottom up, strengthening the foundation and compounding. If you understand what compounding means, because nothing can go outside of it and everybody's working down below and it strengthens it rather than weakens it. Horizontal weakens it. Vertical strengthens it. But when you only do two, you don't keep doing that. The idea here was you don't need to do 12 or 20 across. Do four to eight vertically, and it's manageable because everybody's on the same team. When everyone does this and sponsors six to 12 vertically over a year, contrasted to it having to be done horizontally, as in other plans where uh, they would all be in competition and you would be spread really thin like the pumps, uh, it, it, uh, it accelerates earnings. You want to go faster? You want people to earn faster? It results in teamwork and explosive growth and duplication resulting in your BDCs, 001, 002, 003, and then re-entries maxing out quickly and resulting in others at the same time earning faster, which results in stability and security. And that's what we built. That's what I built with the company. Now, you know, I don't know what's happened since then because I see a lot of people doing it differently. But this is why people earned faster in the early years and it lasted. You know, downline placement of BV does not work and it weakens the foundation and compounding. It invokes the law of decreasing returns because the people at the top are doing it for the people at the bottom, so they have to do less. And it, you know, you're, you're just weakening the foundation. Okay, number 10, uh, earn two checks per center with two banks, BV and IBV, on the same organization. I don't know if you realize how ingenious this is. This is where one earns on retail volume of BV, which is, we call it the lake, because you get 80% of uh, the products, the cost of the products in the lake, and, and they're retail, and they repeat. And the other on internet business volume, or IBV, which I like to call the ocean, because it's much vaster. It's everything else that everybody buys. And it's now 10 to 40%. It used to be three to five or whatever, but it's gone up. And now we're having double IBV. So that's all derived from shopping for everything that else that everybody buys. And they can develop and pay at the same time to an ex any existing UFO based on their customers already in place. You don't need to build new legs. You don't have to build new business. You don't need to get new customers that are already there. They can pay independently of each other and progress at different rates. The BB bank doesn't affect the progress of the IBV bank and vice versa. So you're never, there's no downside, you're never punished. Remarkably, it requires no more recruiting, no more building or new customers, uh, to double the income. Uh, you basically can double your income on the same organization, and many people earn weekly 1500 on the IBV plan, putting them at 3600 a week. So it enables each UFO and BDC to accumulate and earn on internet shopping for both their existing customers base as well as their existing UFO organization on anything that they want to buy. Uh, on shop.com. So the bottom line is, at the end of the day, people doing the shopping annuity, if you duplicate that in an organization, it takes one quarter of the people to max out your centers in BV and IBV as it would without it. So I, I can't even comprehend why somebody wouldn't do it. Okay, so 11, weekly commission cycles pay four times a month. This is a thing that a lot of people miss or don't understand. But well, I want you to think about it. 4.2 times average over a year is how many times uh, the weekly cycle pays, allowing for the upper level leader to maximize profitability by getting paid four times more income on the same volume that would be overflow in a monthly system. It's, it's amazing. So did you understand that? 
If not, give me a call. Let me discuss it with you. Because it equals 4.2 more income per month that would be earned otherwise elsewhere. 12, the monthly accrual option. Although the plan pays weekly, the volume accumulates week to week to the benefit of the new UFO and waits for those that are slower. It's pretty amazing. Somebody above you earns, somebody below you earns, your other leg isn't there at the bracket to earn, the volume stays in and waits uh, for you to catch up. Normally it would reset at the end of the month, but the a UFO can exercise monthly accrual option and have it accrued month to month and get paid for a year before the volume resets to zero. Other programs have a monthly system without accrual. 13, another amazing miracle, reentry. So you max out, you, you're, you're capped at a certain income level on a BDC. Why? It's so that the people at the top don't make all of the money. Uh, there's a limit to it so that it forces the people below to be making money. And when they're making money, you have stability, but you doesn't limit your income because you can multiply it simply by doing the 001, 002, and re-entries. This is like having additional franchises. But with 50% of the sales of the first franchise, when you open the second one, already in place. I mean, incredible. Uh, you know, and without even paying for the additional franchises. In this case, you know, it's unfranchises or BDCs. But once one has maxed out their income in the 001, they can multiply it by simply opening the 002 and 003, which are already half built and double the income by building one more leg. I know I repeat this, but I mean, it's just phenomenal. Then they get uh, to triple their income by building one more leg again. I mean, this is just impossible anywhere else. So it becomes unlimited by placing another unfranchised BDC or re-entry strategically anywhere down vertically in their organization. Now that is the ultimate downline placement. Because you're just not placing BV once. You have a generator that's constantly generating BV every week, every month. So qualifying it and building two more legs and potentially earn another $187,000 as many times as you like. This secures the income of the 001 and the 002 and the 003. At, you know, at the, at the same time, at the very same time, you're multiplying your income, you're vesting or securing the original income. It's also uh, downline placement and benefits everyone in the organization above. Everybody gets credit for that volume. It's the real deal. So do you realize that if the 001 is solid, that if it's done right with careful planning, a UFO can realistically build one more new leg per year and increase their income $187,000 per year. And again, I'll repeat that if they did that at a comfortable pace, it would equal $1,870,000 residual income per year in 10 years. Uh, certainly, it's possible for anyone to earn over a million per year if they do it the right way. And that's what I do, and that's what I have done. So. Here's my final questions. I did that all in one breath, by the way. Uh, but I think that, you know, uh, we got to say the Ten Commandments or the 13 things that make this plan uh, just revolutionary. And we have to appreciate them and understand what allowed. Those things don't happen automatically. There's reasons that we're able to defy gravity. And you need to understand them and not violate them. So... How much of this is taken for granted? That's my question. I just went through it. You're probably yawning and, you know, went to the bathroom. Okay, fine. You've heard them before. But it does not exist in any other program. Why? I mean, why can't they do it? Because we have figured out the methodology, the physics, the formula, the accruals, the requirements to make it work. So, uh, this makes unfranchised opportunity untouchable and exponentially better and more realistic and more profitable than any other home-based or franchise entrepreneurial opportunity in existence. Here's my question. 
Do you agree or do you disagree? Can you answer that in your mind? If you agree, then why not do it the right way? If you disagree, why are you in this? So you see, to me, it's simple logic. So now please listen to me. Please listen. If you said, I agree, the proven system and the unfranchised system are the holy grail, and they're very well defined. It's no guesswork. And even if you or someone comes up with something new uh, that works uh, to the advantage of one group of people for a short term, if it runs counter to the principles that make the MPCP and individual businesses work long term, that allow them to fly, uh, they become self-defeating. So we will end up having to stop them anyway for sake of pre preserving the MPCP and residual income long term because that's what it's all about. We're not going to let anything derail it so that the residual income doesn't continue. So why not just stick to the proven, solid, old-fashioned, but proven way to build the business? And many UFOs grew much faster than they are growing now. And if there's a good answer uh, you know, to, to that, send it to me. But if, you're gonna, if you want to talk to me about what works better or what doesn't work, look, first do me the respect of taking the health check uh, survey to qualify yourself with me and answer the questions that I ask you. You know, the, the link is, is up there, healthcheckunfranchised.com. And the reason I ask that is how can you analyze and talk intelligently and criticize what I'm saying when you're not even doing what it takes to build the business. Maybe if you do it first and then you have a discovery or a question or want to have a discussion, we should have it. But I don't think you've earned the right if you haven't even tried. You're not even doing the fundamental things. Is that fair? Am I being unreasonable? Because People hit me with all types of things, and I'm all ears. But I want to know if you're going to ask me questions, a few questions too. Are you doing it? You know, uh, therefore, uh, does it make sense just to do it the right way? You know, which requires work, and it takes time. But it's better than anything else out there and simply requires the will to do it. Just do it. And it works. But, you know, what's your answer? Would you do that? Yes or no? Well, if it's no, why are we having the discussion? Does that make sense? So, again, every machine or computer program or system operates on a certain rule. Below is a perfectly symmetrical matrix. In our system, it's impossible for somebody to achieve this and for everybody to do it at exactly the same time and repeat it over and over again. I actually tried to make it happen, and I think that I'm one of the best at building a business. I could not do it because everybody has their own will, their own timing, their own thing, and you can't make people conform. Uh, they're going to do what they're going to do. And that's reality. And the plan is based on reality. Now, when you try to alter or manipulate reality, it creates a strange situation for the plan because it's based, just like insurance is, on actuarial statistics. Okay, so the truth of the matter is, however, that it's impossible or has an infinitely low probability of ever occurring. Why? Well, a symmetrical fill happens at once in the same week, every week for months, uh, does max out the MPCP commissions, but actuarially, the probability is zero. It's like an insurance, you know, it's really set up to fail. If everybody died or everybody had a casualty or everybody had an accident on the same day, uh, they would go broke. But that is impossible. Uh, you know, it, it is... Actuarially, statistically, probability math-wise, uh, so unlikely 
that it works. It just doesn't happen. So, however, if it were to occur without human manipulation or breaking the rules, everyone met the requirements and had two personally sponsored active uh, people meeting the, the, the requirements and there was no fake centers and downline BB placement was only in one downline leg at a time, you know, at a time, uh, the, the volume would cover the commissions and revenue would reconcile or balance at any point in time. That's the way the math works. But the effect of unlimited downline placement, looking at what is in the back office and saying, oh, here it is this week. Now it's over here this week. And the effect of unlimited downline BV placement in unlimited places by everyone upline at one time, uh, perfectly placed in the weakest spot in each leg where needed to earn a check is unknown. It's unknown. I don't want to go to the unknown. We know generally the principle in the plan and the, and the business and the actuarials and the math that that stresses it. So the simplest safeguard is not to allow it. Why does anybody need it anyway? You can do it in one place and fix it for three months and then uh, build that out, make it happen, and then you can do it somewhere else. The reason this is impossible this, uh, to, to happen unless everybody was able to downline place uh, after seeing where the volume is and change it every week, then we don't know what will happen. But the reason this is impossible is mainly because of timing and the natural randomness of life and people which the business is dependent upon. So this has been tracked statistically and historically for 26 years and therefore proven. So when somebody uh, alters that basis by manipulating things or creating a synthetic organization, we have to blow the whistle because we're defying gravity and we don't want the plane to crash. So let's talk about timing. Timing's everything in the MPCP. You know, you, you know that because you make sure you get your orders in. But timing's everything and there's a natural randomness to human life and behavior. I want you to listen carefully and think about this. People have different schedules and situations and do things at different times. Isn't that true? I mean, have you ever tried to get everyone to do something in the way or uh, uh, in a certain way uh, or a task at the, ver at the very same time? Have you ever tried it? The plan works better on paper or in a diagram than it does in reality. Why? The plan is perfect, but people aren't, and people are all different. So we, I mean, actually me, actually tried to make it happen in a very regimented, controlled environment. I wanted to build a perfect symmet symmetrical matrix and have everybody doing the requirements and everything necessary at the same time to maximize the earnings of, of everybody and to see what it would, how it would affect the payout. And it, I couldn't get it done, as good as I am, and as controlled as the situation. This, uh, you know, it repeatedly failed and could not make, I could not make it happen. So regardless, the reality is that people have different situations, different motivations, different problems, diversions, sickness, changes of job. Uh, you know, they get into a cause, they have babies. Uh, 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 children, uh, and it consumes their focus. And it's different for everyone. It happens at different times. Even without that, uh, to make it occur in perfect sequence and to sponsor people on successive levels in perfect uh, symmetrical fill, uh, you know, to do it over and over again doesn't make sense to the actual participants. No, oh, I don't want to do that. I got to do this. And you're not going to be able to dictate and control people to that extent. Or it's not always to their benefit. And uh, they'd ha you'd have to do it by force. So most likely when something like that is happening, somebody's synthetically doing it. Uh, 
because it, it's just not normal. So there's a randomness in life and uh, people's pace and performance is random. Would you agree with that? Um, unlimited variables affect it. You know, two getting two, getting two, getting two, two times two, times two, times two. Sequentially and symmetrically sounds good. Uh, and, and then to have them all meeting requirements as to get to get to uh, never has been done unless someone does it in a synthetic matrix digitally, which is not valid and not real. So why is all this important? It affects the math and the actuarials of the plan and the natural basis that the plan is based on and the requirements are set in order for it to uh, reconcile mathematically. So if you're playing with the game board and changing it by manipulating it, it's a big problem. You're basically screwing yourself. Uh, so people have different cue dates and we pass a rule that one must complete the 001 before opening the inside legs of the 002 and 003. Reentries come one at a time and must be used correctly and qualify and sponsor and activate two personally sponsored people and then build it from the bottom up uh, and everyone meeting requirements. That balances the math. So I hope that this is making some sense uh, to you, but this is why it has to be done the right way. We see timing, part of the math and the reconciliation of the plan relies on the rate of change, the rate of change. Every UFO is on a different time clock and BV and IBV level accumulation. Although it may start out the same in one leg, everybody has a second leg. So they may not hit the bracket of 12 and 12 or 24 and 24 or five and five at the same time as the other people in the leg. So once somebody hits, they're all on different scales, different brackets, and different timing. And so the organization and MPCP is not static. Everyone may have a common leg uh, that BV and IBV accrues up, and it's the same uh, or accumulatively the same uh, until one person hits a bracket uh, within a month and it resets. You know, because now they're at zero and zero, but the people above are at four and four. The people below are at three and three. I hope you can understand that. I want to draw a diagram of this because it's so miraculous and mind-blowing how all of this is tracked. And everybody's on different clocks, at different levels, different cue dates, and it tracks it all perfectly. Nobody loses and everybody wins. I mean, it's really amazing. So... Uh, they have different cue dates as well as uh, regenerating volume at different times. So the math has a constant uh, re-upping of volume or regeneration of volume. As volume goes out from being paid, new volume created, and people getting credit hitting uh, checks. It's a dynamic system. And when UFOs accumulate five and five, the volume flushes a green flush. They get paid and it resets for them and is no longer in the system for them, whereas it stays in and waits for other people uh, that are above them or below them to catch up and reach the bracket to uh, get, get paid. Absolutely miraculous when you, when you think about it. So inactive volume purges for different people at different times because they did not meet the requirements to carry their own weight and are passive. So not generating the volume necessary to stay in the accumulation line uh, and getting credit, eventually, uh, uh, if they were paid on that, uh, as well as the upline getting paid, it would load up the payouts on the same volume and cause the commissions to creep. This is also a legal requirement because you can't be making money passively on other people's production uh, when it's not related to your own production. It's basically a security. So for those centers, the volume is removed uh, uh, on their BDC for them as well as uh, everyone up the line. It's a purge and it's mathematically necessary. There's a 90-day period where upline can get credit and may have earned 
on the inactive person's volume, but it's factored into the total payout. And to protect the individual who purged, there's a 90% refund policy. If the product was not sold and the upline uh, would have the option to buy it back and sell it or commissions are adjusted. So again, it all reconciles. Everything's protected and balances. Okay, so the number of apexes, uh, which are two lines converge, that could cause a BDC to earn, uh, that somebody has a way of placing volume in the two lines to allow it to, to apex and hit the five and five, has to be controlled. You just can't have these all over the place, uh, especially when they're created by downline placement. A re-entry is in ratio with completing a cycle at five and five, one at a time, for this reason. And this allows the re-entry to be placed in a fixed location. It can't be moved uh, so that somebody can uh, play games with seeing where the volume is. And one must complete the 001 before earning on the inside legs, requiring only one more accumulation leg, one half of the volume for another 1,500 to 3,600 weekly payout. But manipulation of placing fake centers or unencumbered volume in the second leg is not allowed and increases the payout. And that's why we're so strict about it. Unfortunately, it's difficult to detect until after the commissions were paid. And uh, there, there's severe consequences. So in every line of sponsorship in the MPCP, there's a rate of change for each individual BDC and accumulating in each of the two legs, a rate of change of how much BV can actually still be paid on. It requires a complex series, series of calculus, derivatives, and computer modeling to figure this out. And 25 years ago, JR hired mathematicians to determine it for the requirements and the rules of the plan to make sure it reconciled uh, to maintain a 62 to 65 percent constant payout of commissions on BV and IBV. And that is why you have residual income. Residual income is not residual if it won't last. So we made sure of that. And that's why I get so worked up when people try to manipulate it. Uh, it's good enough the way it is. We just do it the right way. So this is one of the most miraculous aspects of the plan and uh, what allows it to work and why there is a no tolerance on passivity uh, and activity and manipulation. It's so perfect the way it is. Why do you have to think about even doing that? The ultimate test and proof of this is the total commission payout month to month. That proves if it's happening or not. Uh, so it, it, it has remained constant for 27 years. When the variables change and are not adhered to, or the organizational behavior changes, it has an effect on this. Every time it happened and we looked at what was happening and corrected it, the payout snapped right back in line, which is great proof that we're absolutely right, that it's solid. When the practice that, that had changed was identified and eliminated, or the policy corrected and restored you know, the way it was in the past, the payout immediately came back in line as proof of the validity of the mathematical and actuarial model. So the proof is in the pudding. I don't know what to tell you, it's pretty amazing. So we have to defend that model to make sure that it keeps flying and that you can keep getting residual income. Let's, let's face it, the MPCP, it, the profitability and security equal residual income. This is a formula in the MPCP. It's what it's all about. Profitability and security equal residual income. So the plan must maximize profitability for a UFO in the field and maintain a profit ratio of the company resulting in security and stability for residual income. Residual income requires longevity to be residual. Now I know that this is all a little laborious, but it's the magic. It's the magic behind the plan. And other factors that affect the MPCP working as intended uh, or its efficiency to be as 
powerful and the best it can be, uh, creating profitability for you, and at the same time being sound, are good to know. And I'll tell you why they're good to know. You don't want to step out of bounds and test the thing that gives you the residual income. And you don't want to do things that end up slowing your business down and not having as much residual income accrue over a period of time because you were doing something that undermined it. So we're going to look at those things. And I think they're worthwhile knowing. And if you keep these principles in mind, anytime something's going on, anytime somebody suggests to do something, you know the difference between what works and what doesn't work, what's right and what isn't right. It's that simple.